Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Chat Show. This 30-minute webinar is live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And your comments and questions via these platforms are most welcome. Please keep them kind and respectful. Following this event, you are welcome to join us via the Blue Jeans online conferencing app for a one-hour NESA-accredited workshop with our guest presenter. Now, here's your host, Dr. Tim Kitchen. Thank you so much, Rob the Robot, and welcome to the Inject Creativity Live chat show being recorded via Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and well, LinkedIn for the second time, which is exciting, and the APAC Adobe in Education Facebook group. We're recording this on Wednesday, the 19th of August, 2020, and I'm your host, Tim Kitchen, Adobe's Senior Education Specialist for the Asia Pacific region. Before I introduce my amazing co-host, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, their traditions and their living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. Let's introduce our amazing co-host, Erin Raithke. Let's get you up on the screen. Hello, Erin, from TAFE Queensland. How are you? I am very well, Tim. How are you this evening? Very well. In fact, you're, you're actually looking a little bit more well than I've seen you in the past because I think, I think we can hear something. Oh, 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 drum roll. We have a special announcement Congratulations, Erin and her partner Max have become engaged. Oh, that's a very large round of applause. Yeah, cheer. That'll do. <laughs> Congratulations, Erin. Thank you. Yeah, it's it was a, a really wonderful weekend. Um, so yeah, just very quiet, intimate. Did like the whole lovely romantic cooking dinner thing. It was all very very well done. He, now, um, let's he, get and, a and he picked out the ring himself, no help, no no anything from me. Like it was all him planning it out. So I'm yeah, feeling pretty blessed. Let's uh, get a close-up of the ring, Erin. Bring it up to the camera. I'm just going to oh, yep. stop sharing the screen here so we can just get a close. In fact, go. I'm going to stop. Me oh, that looks amazing. There Tell us go. a bit about the ring. Yeah, so uh, he actually got a um, Australian opal. Um, with with two little stones set on either side of it, so that's my birthstone. It was you know very sweet, very well thought out. He's been like I've been mentioning things that I like and dislike about jewelry in the five years we've been together. So he's obviously just been quietly going. Nice, taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Oh, that's exciting news, and uh, we're very pleased to um, celebrate it with you during Thank this show. You. I'll pass it on to Max as well. Thank you, Tim. Excellent. All right, uh, just going to bring up Luke's slides again because we have some other announcements to make, and that is that uh, we've got over 864,000 members now of the Adobe Education Exchange and getting close to 134,000 in APAC. And look at the increased numbers there. These are the people that have joined us just this year within those regions. In Australia, we're getting well, we're over. Well, just just go back a slide there for me, Luke, because I was going to do a drum roll before we got to that slide. But just hold that thought for a minute. In Australia, thirty six uh, over thirty six and a half thousand. In New Zealand, we're getting close to the five thousand mark with uh, an increase of nearly a thousand this year. And now we'll do the drum roll because it's quite exciting that. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> We've actually hit our target. We were hoping to get 6,000 new members in ANZ this year, and we've already reached that well before the end of the year. So thank you so much, everyone, and a special congratulations and applause to everybody who's been helping to promote the Adobe Education Exchange in your region, and it is a wonderful resource, and we do very much appreciate your support there. Erin, tell us about what's happening in today's tonight's show. 
Sure thing, Tim. Well, I'm looking forward to introducing everyone to our special guest for this episode, Adobe Education Leader and Primary Teacher Extraordinaire Joel Ahrens from Melbourne, as well as filmmaker and social media lead at ESPN, Jamie Van Leeuwen. And we'll be meeting and finding out more about Joel and Jamie very soon. Helping us moderate and doing a lot of the techie things behind the scenes is my wonderful colleague, Adobe Customer Su Success Manager, Luke Cathcart. Where are you, Luke? Can we see you? Let's bring you up on the screen. There you are. Just about, oh, we've lost you. We can only see black for some reason. Don't know what's going on there, Luke. I'm not sure if you've muted yourself out but Luke is behind there he is there, he oh, is. there we got him and we'll just unmute you Luke or you might be need to unmute yourself but uh, Luke welcome normally we have Jerry doing this and Jerry's not able to be with us tonight so we want to thank Luke for taking on that role for Absolutely. us all. He's struggling a bit he's looked like we've lost Luke there for a second Oh, well, we'll just we'll just write it out and see how we go. If we don't have Luke to do some of the back of house stuff, then we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll be back soon, and uh, he'll be able to sort that out. So uh, Luke is uh, helping us out, and when he comes back in, tell us a bit more about what's happening. Thanks, Erin. Uh, well, uh, we'll just quickly go through um, some housekeeping. So obviously when it comes to the chat show, we keep an eye on all of the feeds coming in from Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, if you are putting in comments from Twitter, we may not be seeing them at the moment, um, but we will be featuring any um, comments or questions that are posted during the show um, just to make sure that we're making it as interactive as possible. So please, please comment and join us now as well as for the deeper dive afterwards. Um, so that will be on um, Tim's YouTube. Yeah, and sorry, the <laughs> all the fluster from my announcement earlier. Um, so yes, if you're on Twitter and you do want to contribute, you may you may want to jump across onto Tim's YouTube channel, and that's at um, Bitly forward slash YouTube hyphen Tim Kitchen. Yeah, that will that. That's a way of guaranteeing that any questions or comments that you pose, we will be able to post if you're in YouTube. We find that with Twitter, uh, we're not able to get your comments for some reason, but we are getting them from YouTube, we're getting them from Facebook, and we are getting them from LinkedIn. So welcome all those people who are on those channels and keep contributing. The more that you contribute, the more fun this is going to be. And then later on at the top of the hour, we'll be jumping to our blue jeans room and let's just bring that up there it is thanks luke and just make sure you've got that in the back of your pocket because that's where we will be heading at the top of the hour for those of you who are almost except for um south australia in northern territory for everyone else it's the top of the hour lovely all right erin what else have we got well, uh, I guess it's worth mentioning on my subs this morning for YouTube, what popped up, but our video from last week for the chat show was published to the Adobe in Education YouTube page. So I was quite chuffed to see a video that I'm in come up into my subs right underneath Adam Savage from Mythbusters. So that was a pretty cool little moment. And um, we've also got on, um, if you join us for the deeper dive we've also got our spark challenge this week which is uh all about video yes. this week isn't it Tim? that's right so, so what's the challenge erin yeah so what we're going to be doing is asking you to create a spark video based on at least two things that you've learned that you could apply in your classroom so ideally one of those things needs to be from the chat show now and one from the deeper jive show afterwards so we'd like you to use all of the spark video tools at your disposal so we'd like you to have it include a voiceover some music that's included with adobe spark video some still images titles and we'd like it to be between 10 and 20 seconds in length so we can share the submissions during the deeper dive and give everyone a good round of applause for their contributions bit of a challenge there erin it is a challenge when it's a video so good luck hopefully you will accept the challenge for those of you who haven't used spark before i'm just going to quickly share my screen and jump into it hopefully you can now see a google chrome browser and i'll be typing in spark.adobe.com into the address bar that brings up the login process you can log in with google facebook apple or adobe 
or if you know that your school has an enterprise agreement, you can log in with your school account, which is what I'm doing right now. Jumping into my school account, it's actually my company account, and you'll see some Adobe branding in a sec. Uh, but if you're doing this through your school account, you would see your school branding just logging in. I do have a second level of authentication that is coming through to my phone now. Any second now. Any second now. Any second. Oh, it's going a little bit slow. Is this double? Here we go. We're in the. Yeah, <laughs> oh, dear. So here it comes. I just need to. Oh, yeah, it only, takes, it only takes a hot minute when you're demonstrating live, doesn't it, Tim? Exactly. That's probably the <laughs> slowest it's ever been. Uh, now it's telling me it hasn't been. There we go. We're good now. <laughs> yeah, well, those are the happy uh, little circles. Those are the ones we like to see. All right, it's just about to come up. And this is accessing Spark in the browser. And, of course, Spark is also three separate iOS apps, Spark Post, Spark Page, and Spark Video for the challenge. So you can do this through the Spark Video app. Spark Post is also available on Android as well. Top left-hand corner is where you click plus and you can choose what type of Spark project you're creating. In this case, it's a video. And then you can probably skip the start, skip this part here, and just jump straight into the environment that helps build your video. A little tutorial will come up first. You can also skip that if you already know how to use Spark Video. But if you don't, that might be helpful for you. And any second now, we'll see our tutorial in three, two, one, bang. That never worked. No, no, it never works. But we give it a go. Maybe it needs a drum roll. Oh, hey. no. <laughs> can't have it earlier. There we go. So there's our tutorial. We can close that, and now we can play with our video. That uh, button allows you to do your voiceovers. This button allows you to bring in video content. This one allows you to bring in text and titles. This one allows you to bring in photos. So what we recommend is take screen grabs of the things that you think are great that you can apply in your classrooms and then bring those in as photos into your video to a little voiceover and then when you've finished your videos this button here allows you to add new content so you can have as many slides as you want but keep it down remember the the target is to go between 10 and 20 seconds for this video so keep it short yeah. and then when Spark it comes videos. to go on Aaron. Yeah, so I was about to say Spark video is good that way too because if your voiceover goes a bit long it gently reminds you that you need to keep it tight it does. And when you click share, you can then publish your video. And when you publish it, pick a category like education. You can turn on or off your author attribution, but then click create link. It's that creating link that will generate a hyperlink, uh, which I probably won't wait for now. But when it comes up, you can then paste that into the chat. Now, of course, you'll be doing that in the Blue Jeans environment into the Blue Jeans chat. And Luke will be keeping a careful eye on who's the first one in to win the Spark Challenge for today. Now, mm -hmm. I'm just going to close that because we don't want to spend any more time on that. Let's mm -hmm. see what else we've got planned. Tell us what's coming up next, Erin. Well, last week, Adobe launched the hashtag from me to you project, especially for the Asia Pacific or APAC region. And Adobe is encouraging you to be part of a community video project. And Luke, if we can get slide nine up, that'd be terrific because uh, we're not seeing that at the moment, are we? Let me just add that up. There we go. Uh, Adobe is encouraging you to be part of a community video project connecting people through cultural experiences across Asia Pacific. So whether it's a local tradition, a hidden gem from your neighbourhood, a signature recipe or local music, use Adobe Premiere Pro or Premiere Rush to record, edit and share it so others can experience it too. You could win 5000 American dollars. So to find out more about this, you... You take the time to look at the link that's on this slide right now and that link will take you to a site that has more information. Bit.ly slash Adobe dash from me to you will get you through to that link. The contest is open to residents from South Korea, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines. We often have people from the Philippines here, mm -hmm. Indonesia, Hong Kong and Taiwan. But you need to be 14 or over. So even share this with your teenage students and children. 
Yeah, we've got some great talent in all of those locations that join us on the regular. And the winning videos will be selected based on creativity, originality, consistency with the hashtag from me to you theme and the overall quality. Looking forward to seeing what you can achieve in that. Erin, introduce our special guests for today. No worries, Tim. It's my great pleasure to introduce Joel Ahrens and Jamie Van Leeuwen. So Joel has been an Adobe Education Leader for many years. He's very talented and is a highly respected STEM and media arts teacher in Melbourne at Camberwell South Primary. Welcome, Joel. Thank you. Great to be here. And, uh, and Jamie also lives in Melbourne but grew up in Sydney. He's a filmmaker and a social media lead at ESPN and possibly is more well known in our community as the son of Adobe education leader Dr Bronwyn Wade Van Leeuwen from Macquarie University. Welcome Jamie. Yeah thanks for having oh. me guys. Uh, <laughs> you got you there yeah no thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I do half as well as my, my lovely mum does. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just looking at the comments now just to see if we've got your mum on board at the moment. And if Bronwyn, if you are there listening, go ahead and type a comment so that we know that you are there and uh, that would be terrific. We've got a few comments that have come through already and Mark is saying what we might do is stop sharing the screen so we can see everyone. There we go. Good evening all. Uh, a bit late tonight, but here it is. Mark's a regular from New South Wales and Barbara's with us. Uh, what's the maximum length of a Spark video, Barbara is asking? Well, I don't think there is one, but the general rule, and Jamie, you can probably back me up on this. When it comes to creating videos for people, young people to watch these days, would you recommend around about the three-minute mark is a good sort of length to aim for? Yeah, nice and short, nice and short. Just try and trim the fat as much as possible. So, yeah, two minutes, three minutes. Spot on. So actually the um, Spark Challenge for tonight is a fantastic exercise in trying to, as you said, trim it and make it as tight as possible because 10 to 20 seconds, you can actually convey a bit of information if you're very snappy with your content. Absolutely. Joel, what will you be sharing with us during the Deeper Dive event this evening? Well, I'm going to be talking about video editing with primary school students. Um, I, I do video editing even for our foundation kids in the five and six year olds, um, which is pretty amazing. And um, we're going to be looking at the app uh, Adobe Premiere Rush today. Which is a, a big step up from Spark Video, but nowhere near as complicated as Premiere Pro. Mm. So that'd be great. It's become a bit of a game changer. I've been hearing that word a lot when it comes mm. to Premiere Rush. And so you've got your students using it at your primary school? Yeah, they're all using it now. Um, previous, before it came out, I was um, getting my older students to play around with Premiere Pro and they could do it um, to a basic degree, but um, I think there's a lot less uh, there's a lot less of, of a learning curve with Premiere Rush and it's definitely become my uh, teaching app of choice for sure. Yeah. And, and so are your students doing that in the um, on on P, on the computers, or are they using um, like tablets or? or so the youngest like student, well, they're all shooting their videos on the iPad, um, mm -hmm. and the younger students are using the iPad app um, to do their editing, and I get the older students to use uh, laptops. And you know, functionality wise, they both do the same thing. To be honest, um, I'm just trying to get my older students more used to um, using a laptop. Uh, rather than uh, always relying on an iPad. That's the only reason. Younger students, you can kind of have those sort of shock-proof cases on them, so if they get a little bit rough yeah. and tumble, they survive. Yeah, um, but the, the, the great thing about it, though, is that uh, because it's all cloud-based, uh, anything they shoot on the on the iPad immediately gets uploaded to the cloud and they get on their laptop and it's there waiting for them. It's fantastic. Yeah. Nice comment there from Mark in New South Wales saying, looking forward to your session, Joel. Rush is exciting and great to see how it is, goes in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And uh, Jamie, what are you going to be sharing with us during the deeper dive this evening? I'll be sharing a video that I've created around the COVID experience in Australia, something we can all really relate to at the moment. Um, yeah, I teamed up with a local Melbourne poet uh, and he did a, a fantastic poem and I did uh, the visuals for that. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. We're going to, I've had a look at it, obviously, and it's, it blew me away. It's a beautiful poem and it's beautifully filmed and beautifully shot. We're looking forward to seeing that in the Deeper Dive event. Jamie, check this out. Your mum is with us. 
but no sound. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting is that she's with us with, she's put a little comment here too, hi all, a few issues with IT tonight from your mum. Uh, so she's trying to be with it. But notice, Erin, it's coming yeah. from Twitter. It's coming from yeah. Paris. It's our yeah, first in the comments. Yeah, so probably, that's interesting. Maybe actually, yeah, we'll 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 have to follow up with Bronwyn afterwards to ask her how she managed to get it working. <laughs> so we can give more tips yeah. to everybody later uh, for <laughs> next week. So that's fabulous. So Bronwyn, a little bit of advice. You might want to jump in via YouTube and you might have a bit more success uh, in yeah. that way if you want to connect with us. Now, Joel, what does being video literate mean to you? Well, it's interesting. When I first start teaching uh, video to uh, to all my students, I say to them, um, you know, some people think it's it's a bit silly. Well, young kids think it's silly to teach photography or video because it's really easy. You get a device, you press a button, you record it, you stop it. You know, kids these days have got access to devices that can do these in seconds. Um, but the the uh, I say to them, there's a difference between doing what's called a happy snap. Uh, where you're not really thinking about it and actually taking some time. And the same goes for video as well. So to me, video literacy is all about communication. Um, it's not just about shooting a video. It's making sure that whatever your message is, whether it's to entertain or to inform, uh, whatever that message is, it's clear, um, it's concise, it makes sense, uh, you're considering your audience, all these things that we teach them in uh, in regular literacy um, comes through on video literacy as well. And I always make sure that they understand that these are transferable skills and that when they're doing projects in the classroom, I, I tell them, put your hand up and ask to do it on video. Ask to use Premiere Rush to do your project because you can communicate just as easily on that, maybe even better than um, writing an essay or doing a poster or whatever. So it's all about communication as far as I'm concerned. So true. I'm actually true. writing a, a blog post at the moment for the New South Wales Department of Education on literacy and numeracy with Adobe is the title that they've given me to write. And it's interesting doing some research about what is literacy these days. Hmm. And you even look at the Australian curriculum and they, they're pushing a whole range of literacies of which digital features or digital options features quite quite dramatically. Well, so, I don't know if you remember when you when uh, you do your reading with the kids and they're asked to make connections and they do text-to-self -text connections or text-to-text -text connections. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, these days, text-to-text -text connections doesn't just mean um, a book that I've read that this reminds me of. It can also mean a film that you've watched or a video that you've seen or a, or a TV show. You know, media is just as uh, relevant as a text as a book is. Mark from New South Wales said, so true, Joel, as a photographer teacher, photography teacher myself, your comments resonate. I hope the rest of the world catches up soon. Thank you, Mark. Erin, you got a question for Jamie. Yeah, I was actually wondering, Jamie, do you have a particular recollection of, of when your, you know, video literacy skills started going from something that was organic to something that you were deliberately cultivating? Yeah, I suppose uh, I used to work as a, as a TV uh, journalist up in Queensland and I suppose it, I sort of grew a love for them and storytelling that way. So I suppose it was, yeah, maybe six or seven years ago, um, you know, working to tell stories in a visual way. Uh, and then since then I've gone on to create my own content uh, away from news and my own projects. So uh, I think that was really where it started. How did you learn your video skills, Jamie? Just self-taught, self-taught everything. Um, it helps, I mean, like anything, it helps to be passionate about it. And mm -hmm. I just love the way that you can communicate to the masses. I mean, social media these days is so huge, online websites, YouTube, everything. Um, I like being able to be able to create my story um, and get that out to the world. That's a really good reflection because when we're dealing with young people who may not be learning at school how to create videos, there's a good example of someone who's been successful there in yourself, Jamie. You're now working for ESPN. You've been a filmmaker. You're a filmmaker and you've worked in television because you're self-taught. You haven't learned yeah. those skills at school. So that's a, it's a great story for us as teachers to share. Mm. Well, Jamie, tell us, what, what does it mean to be working with as a social media lead with ESPN? 
Yeah, so I work, ESPN, for anyone that doesn't know, is a, a major a sports broadcaster, particularly based out of the US. Um, we have a smaller team here, but uh, it's really working with sport every day. So I get down and I film football players and get interviews and put little uh, packages together that way. That's my day-to-day -day running as well as the social channels and cultivating our social presence. Um, they both work hand in hand, and I think a lot of people could attest to it. Um, one side is the video and the, the creation and the other is the distribution so the social media side so video and and social media they go really hand in hand together what's your go-to tool when you're editing bread and butter is uh is uh premiere pro uh use quite a lot of after effects um yeah photoshop illustrator um big one would be premiere pro every day um then a bit more after effects after that uh I want to try and teach myself a bit more animation and things. So uh, we'll see how we go in the future. Terrific. And Joel, your go-to tool when you're doing your video editing? Well, I mean, uh, lately it's been Premiere Rush. Uh, you know, when Rush first came out, uh, I sort of poo-pooed it a little bit as far as my own use goes. I like Premiere Pro. I'm comfortable with it. I'm by no means an expert, but I, I get good results from it. Um, but uh, during this uh, lockdown that we have, uh, especially in Melbourne, I've been creating video con content weekly for the students. Um, it's just been a lot easier doing it with uh, doing it with Rush and just getting it out. Um, so you'll see when when I present mine, when you see my uh, Rush home screen, you see all the videos there, all the different projects that I've been doing. It's um, been crazy. I, I, I have a special love for Premiere Pro, but I, I have been using Rush a lot. Well, we're going to be finding out a lot more about Premier Rush in the Deeper Dive event, and we're going to be finding out a lot more about Jamie and his work when we show his latest film during the Deeper Dive event. Thank you both of you for joining us for this chat show, and we'll be joining you guys again very soon in our Blue Jeans room. So let's give them a round of applause, and thank you for being part of this show, which is exciting, and we're going to hear from you again very, very soon. We'll just say goodbye now. Erin, what have we got on the agenda now? Well, starting our special announcements for this evening, we've got the Global Adobe in Education team's recent launch of the Adobe Creative Educators Program. This is a program for all educators in all curriculum areas. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be in this program. No, you do not. So if you want to know more, hover your camera over the QR code on the slide or type the link to find out more about the one hour creativity for all course on the Adobe Education Exchange. So this course is an entry requirement for the Adobe Creative Educators Program. And are we going, do we have time for the short video about the creativity for all course? Yeah, Steve? I think so. I might interrupt it at some point, but let's just play a bit of this. Creativity is a vital and teachable skill for all our students. With the Adobe Creative Educator Program, start your professional learning journey to develop, nurture, and sustain creativity for the next generation. When you start the Creativity for All Level 1 course, you'll explore how to define creativity and recognize it in your students. You'll also learn from other creative educators and see examples of how they support creativity in their classes and courses around the world. And creativity is the driving force that is going to make any young person right now much more valuable. After you complete this one hour course, we are excited to welcome you into our Adobe Creative Educator community. Here and that'll do for that video. Many of you have seen it before. The 2020 APAC Adobe Education Summit is happening during the September holidays between September 29 and October 1. Make sure you register your interest to be involved via the link or the QR code that's on this slide if you haven't already. We currently have about 80 teachers, maybe about 85 teachers now who have registered since our last checked, which is great, but we have got space for more. It's day two which is the open day for all educators that we want you to promote and be involved with if you're not already an AEL or an Adobe Creative Educators. We'll give you some more information on that during the Deeper Dive show. And if you are on Facebook and you're not already, you could become a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group. So you can join this group through uh, www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash A-U-S-A-E-L um, or use the QR code on the screen. This is a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education. 
And we've got a special finish to the chat show coming up now. We'll see you soon in the Blue Jeans room. Thank you for being part of this week's Inject Creativity Live chat show. We hope you enjoyed it and found it edutaining. It's now time to switch over to Blue Jeans via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for the deeper dive show, which is just about to start. See you there.